Good evening. Um, welcome to Film School at Ackland Burnie School. What we're doing this evening is we're celebrating um, the merits of people that have worked incredibly hard. All the, the digital print work over here came with their coursework, their blogging entries. That was three months solid work. And if I could remind you that, you know, it would be great if they were just doing that, but a lot of the students, well, all of the students that were doing this had two other A-levels to work on, maybe had an extended project, or maybe going to this other wonderful club that, that takes place at Ackland Burley. So one, one thing I'm really proud of uh, to be here tonight is just to, to really celebrate the work tonight, but also the work that you guys undertake on a daily basis. So thank you very much. Oh. Gary, um, who introduced our project and who gave us uh, the inspiration to work with Ivan Novello Award winning lyrics and for lending us a great deal of support. Um, you'll hear all the music um, on the trailers this evening has been, we've been given the copyright, not least um, because of Gary's uh, help. Um, so you'll be hearing Gary Jules, you'll be hearing Ed Sheeran, uh, you'll be hearing Lily Allen, all of which I'm very thankful came through you. So thank you very much for that. Christine <laughs> has really, really supported us um, in so many projects, and not least with uh, being a wonderful mentor on, on this project, but also giving us the opportunity to take our students down to her um, academy, Christine Blundell's Makeup Academy in Camden, to work with her postgraduate students. And you know you can see the impact that that has on our, on, on on the work you're going to see this evening. Uh, we had a range of mentors. Unfortunately, a lot of them couldn't be here this evening because of their commitments. Um, but Andy Murray. And, yeah, Andy Murray for the main. So that really um, it, it, it is all I want to say. Hi there. Um, of course, they. They could have just nicked the songs like everybody else does these days. <laughs> but Oliver wanted them to go through the right channels and get the right permissions. And because I know, know that these people, I was able to open a few doors. That's pretty much all I did. But I do have some notes here, which I'm going to pretty much ignore. Uh, right, now just when you thought that this event couldn't get any better, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm Gary Osborne, I'm a songwriter. I used to write with Elton John. I uh, wrote uh, a rather famous album based on the War of the Worlds, uh, which now tours as a huge arena show. And uh, the last time I had a hit, which was a bloody long, blinking long time ago, was by a little chap called Little Chris, who wore his hat sideways. It was a song called Ch Ch Checking It Out. The older ones here won't know it because they're Radio 2 listeners. The younger ones are too young, so I don't know why I mentioned it, but there you go. What I'm here to talk about, I'm here because I'm the chairman of the Ivan Novello Awards. And the Ivan Novello Awards are an award for songwriting. Uh, and it's, um, it's been going for 58 years. Uh, I haven't been chairman of it all that time. But uh, Ivan Novello himself was a famous actor, playwright and songwriter during the first half of the 20th century, the last century. Uh, about a hundred years ago, he was the most famous songwriter in Britain. He'd be like Andrew Lloyd Webber is now, only obviously better looking. But then, everybody is better looking <laughs> than Andrew. Um, and Ivor was also a movie star, and he starred in some of the very early, early silent films made by Alfred Hitchcock. Now, Alfred Hitchcock was the master of suspense, which kind of ties into this horror thing that we've got going on here tonight. Um, I don't know if uh, any of you would have seen a film that Hitchcock did called Psycho. Anyone seen that? This is a very famous horror slasher type film. And the most famous scene in it uh, involves a stabbing in a shower. And interestingly, you don't see the stabbing. All you do is you see the blood and you hear this sound. That's the sound of the fiddles. And as he stabs, you just... So Hitchcock didn't bother showing you what was happening. He let the music tell the story. And that's 
about the power of music. Uh, and, and so that's what I want to talk about, is the power of music. It's, um, talking of horror stories, I, I had a terrible nightmare last night, and I woke up and I thought I saw the ghost of Gloria Gaynor at the end of my bed. First I was afraid. <laughs> <laughs> then I was petrified. Um, right. Uh, I've done the psycho bit, yeah, the power of music. Yeah, Ivo wrote, um, one of the songs that Ivo Novello wrote was called Keep the Home Fires Burning. And this was the song that helped us win the First World War, just like We'll Meet Again helped us win the Second World War. Uh, just like a, a, a song called We Shall Overcome is the anthem for all people who are oppressed and are, are trying to fight back. It's, again, it's about the power of song, power of music. Uh, we've got all kinds of songs. We've got romantic songs, sexy songs, comedy songs, nostalgic songs, dance songs, party songs, propaganda songs, protest songs, patriotic songs, war songs, peace songs, <gasps> songs of celebration, songs of joy, songs of sorrow, songs of loss, songs of lust, and of course, songs of love. Songs have power. Interesting, I'll tell you about the power of one particular song. Kind of a strange story. I live, uh, I live on the beach and I look out on a clear day, I can see the Isle of Wight. A couple of years ago on the Isle of Wight, a, a pub singer called Simon Ledger was uh, appearing, doing his usual pub set in a, uh, a bar, the, uh, the, Driftwood, uh, the Driftwood Beach Bar he was in. And he was doing a, a, an old... Uh, 70s hit called Kung Fu Fighting. Does anybody know that song? Everybody was Kung Fu. Whoa, we can have a sing song now. Whoa. Oh, thank you very much. We can and um, this song, he was singing it. Everybody was Kung Fu Fighting. It's about Kung Fu. And just at that moment, a Chinese bloke and his mother were walking past the bar. And they heard the reference in it to Chinese people, and they decided the song was racist. They could have just kept walking, but they were public spirited, so they phoned the police. Uh, it's odd that it was considered racist, because it was um, written and performed by a chap from Jamaica, and it was produced from a, by a chap from India. But they thought it was racist, so they phoned the police. Um, and uh, this song was a worldwide, massive worldwide hit, sold four million copies. It was the biggest selling song of 1974. Hundreds of millions of people enjoyed it on radio, TV, gigs, concerts, karaoke clubs. But for 40 years, they'd all missed what these two people had spotted, which was that it was racist. So they called the police, and of course you'd think that maybe the police might have told them to sod off. But, oh, everyone, they, were, they weren't busy that day. They had no criminals to catch. They had no government ministers to fit up. They had no victims to um, persecute. So they went and tried to track down Simon Ledger for singing the racist song. And this is where it gets really surreal because they finally tracked him down later that night. He was in the middle of his dinner at the local Chinese restaurant. Ah, unfortunately, the story ends like a Bee Gees concert in tragedy because he got away with it. Because they didn't have enough evidence, apparently. Although, I don't know, it's all there in the lyric. But uh, I think that's a, just a crazy, a crazy story about the power of this song. Uh, the power they had over these people, anyway. Um, but a rather nicer story about the power of, of, of song would be when I was doing judging for last year's Ivan Novello Awards, and I had a, a lot of very famous judges there. We had uh, um, Paloma Faith, Guy Chambers, who writes all the Robbie Williams songs, I had Angels and stuff like that. We had uh, Joe Wiley, who introduced the Glastonbury coverage last week. And right in the middle of this judging session, which was a six hour session where we had to listen to song after song, one of the judges, a beautiful lady called uh, Narina Palo, she suddenly burst into tears. Obviously, I've upset her with my politically incorrect banter. I said, but why are you crying? She said, I'm crying because this song is so beautiful. It was a song called Laura by um, an act called Back for Lashes. And the purity of seeing these tears just for no other reason than after 
about a minute of this song, she felt so moved that she cried in front of all these important people. Made me listen to it. I said, please, can we play, hear that one again? And we hear it again. I gave it more marks and actually ended up being one of the finest, although it got beaten by Emily Sander. But um, again, an illustration of the power, the power of song. And what we're going to see today, of course, is the marriage of film and song, which goes back to the Hitchcock story. The, uh, they, they, each of them took a, a song which had won an Ivan Novello Award, and they linked it in with, with a horror theme. So I, I can't wait to see it. Um, that thing about crying so quickly from music, has anyone ever cried during like, like one minute of watching a play or a movie, or reading a book and one minute later you cry? But, but music seems to just cut right through to the heart. Thank God, because otherwise I wouldn't be uh, able to make a living. Um, anyway, I, I, that's pretty much enough, enough from me. I, I've talked about the power of song. Uh, I, I want to talk about the power of Oliver Rosen. I can't begin to list the fine qualities of this man. Lord knows I've tried. When I first knew him, he had a full head of lustrous curly hair. Uh, and a lot of his friends are getting kind of worried. Basically, our, his friends blame you guys for, for the, for the uh, slight hair loss that's going on. But we're, anyway, <laughs> we're clubbing together because he's actually so much is falling out now. We're clubbing together to buy him something useful, a hoover. Uh, I've known him since he was young and fancy free. If it was free, he fancied it. And uh, I'm going to hand you back to him so that he can uh, kick, off the, uh, kick off the movies. Give him a big hand or at least two fingers.